Hey YouTube, I hope you had a Merry Christmas, not in quarantine like us in France. Ah, that's okay. We all know that Christmas home alone, it's not so bad. You know, in my vlogs, I take you with me during my photo shoots and I show you how I take my pictures. But I rarely talk about how I edit them. I ask you if it was something you might be interested in and apparently it is. So, new format. We won't spend an hour on each picture, but rather I share with you just one tip, a technique specific to the shooting, one or two little hacks on the way. What I want to do is a super fast format, like three or four minutes. You get the information, done. And we already lost 30 seconds, so let's go. For today, we are not going to talk about colorimetry or editing, especially since I used one of my presets on the globality of the images. Yeah, photographer, YouTube, you know. Of course, I'm going to propose Lightroom presets someday. I want to do it right, so it takes a little time, but don't worry, like everyone else, I will honor you with that at some point. Now, we are going to talk about vanishing points and distortion lines in this video to try to get harmonious images when photographing buildings. The first thing I do is to level the main structure line of the picture with the cropping tool bubble level. This is also the time to think about composition, as here for example, or on this image. I have accentuated the symmetry by closing the edges of the frame with the concrete I don't know the name thingy here. I've been asked how I created the halo effect. It's not in post, but during the shooting, thanks to this filter. If you want to know more, I have a video about it. I put it somewhere. It's a first step, but if you want to go further, it's in the transformation panel. Lens correction may straighten some perspectives, but that's where most of the work will be done. You have several automation tools where the software will try to do the best it can, or you can act manually on each type of deformation with the sliders. Play on horizontal, vertical lines, rotation, offset. But for my part, I always use the upright. By clicking on this icon, I have access to guides that I can manually use to retrace the verticals and horizontals of my image. Don't forget the automatic cropping and beam, you get a much more pleasant result in terms of structure. <laughs> it's so cheap. I don't know if we're still on schedule, but I have one last tip for you and a good one. During this photo shoot, I collected several types of images. Those about the urban environment, others more focused on a human level, or or just texture images. Combining these images together will allow me to tell a much richer and deeper story than the individual ones, and to describe more accurately the atmosphere of that night. For this, I will use a triptych or a quadriptych. In Photoshop, all you have to do is to divide your image in three parts with the guides and create three groups on which to apply the corresponding masks. Then you just have to drag your images into the folders to easily change their position and test the different combinations that work best. You don't want to do that? Nah, don't waste your time, I did it for you. In the description, you have a link to download the PSD file, it takes you to Gumroad, just set the price to zero. Yeah, it's free. Merry Christmas. And beam, all good. If you don't have Photoshop, no worries, you can go to photopia.com. It's the same thing, but online and completely free. And the template I gave you works fine with it. So much for today with this new format, you know I'm going to need your opinion, so give me your feedback in the comments. I don't know if we were under 5 minutes, but we shouldn't be too long. At least you didn't waste any time and I've got time for creating more videos or to read philosophy. I let you go check out the vlog if you haven't yet. Here you have the video about the filter and see you in 2021, finally. See you mate, keep on creating.